Now let's see if our matrix for the thin lens matches what we calculated in earlier units for the thin lens when we did this geometrically. So let's see, the way we're going to figure that out is we're going to draw an optical axis and we're going to draw a thin lens and we're going to remember the property of the lens is that if light comes parallel, hits the lens, it focuses like that. Right? It goes from a parallel uh, ray, will go to the axis in this distance f. Okay? So we can check our work with this setup. If we assume this, we can calculate what do the matrices tell us f will be. We can do that by saying we're going to start out here with the matrix y0. Right? Because it's at some height y, and it's at zero angle. And then we're going to end up here with a vector uh, 0 and then some angle alpha. And you can see the way we drew it, it's actually going to be a negative angle. It's below the horizontal. But anyway, from y0 to 0 alpha. And we just have to apply our matrices and then see if they give the right answer. So let's see. First, we have light in the state y0. And the first thing that happens to it is that it is refracted at this interface. Right? So we're not going to propagate to it. We're just going to start at that interface. So that, based on our previous expression, is going to be 1, 0, 1 down here. And here we had n prime minus 1 over r2 plus uh, 1 minus n prime over r1. So that's the refraction of that. I'm sorry, not the first surface. That's the refraction through the entire lens. Right? That's the thin lens matrix. But then we're not finished. We still have to translate to get to here. Right? So when it goes through the lens, all it really does is change the angle. See, so your height would still be y. So to get it to go down to 0, uh, we need to also go through a translation matrix of distance f. And if you put all those together, those should be equal to 0 alpha if it focuses the light at a distance f. Okay. So let's go through and multiply them and see what happens. So let's see. So I'm going to multiply that times that, and I'm going to get a vector that's going to be what? It's going to be y on the top. And now it's this angle that's going to get complicated. Uh, this term times y plus 0. Well, it's not that complicated. It's just y times n prime minus 1 over r2 plus 1 minus n prime over r1. Okay. So that's the matrix, uh, or the new vector. And that's multiplied by the matrix 1, f1, 0. And that had better be equal to 0 alpha. All right. So we just did those two. And now I guess we'll keep going and say it's um, the top of the vector is 1 times y, and then uh, plus f times y times n prime minus 1 over r2 plus 1 minus n prime over r1. And then the bottom part is 0 times y plus, and then now here in the bottom, y times n prime minus 1 over r2 plus 1 minus n prime over r1 and that's equal to 0 alpha. OK. So now we have the a vector equals a vector. Well, this term has to be equal to that, and this term has to be equal to that. Right? We don't actually care about alpha. Our, real, our basis for figuring this out is f. At f, the height should go to 0. So we really just care about this top line. We also know we just care about the top line because it's the only one with an f in it. If there's no f in the bottom. It's not going to tell you anything. So let's see. So we know that a y, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of factoring. y times 1 plus f times n prime minus 1 over r2 plus 1 minus n prime over r1 equals 0. So of course we divide by a y, that goes away. And then we have 1 plus f times all this equals 0. And we actually want to solve for 1 over f would be better. So if this thing equals minus 1, then 
uh, let's see, uh, this thing equals minus 1 and we'll solve for 1 over f. It's really 1 over f is, um, uh, uh, is equal to this thing, right? So, okay, so here's some obvious algebra that I'm just flailing to do in my head here. 1 over f equals n prime minus 1 over r2 uh, plus 1 minus n prime over r1. And that's starting to look um, fairly familiar because what we can do is uh, realize that if we just make this negative, then this becomes 1 minus n prime, or this becomes n prime minus 1. And then we can factor out an n prime minus 1, and we find that 1 over f equals n prime minus 1 times 1 over and I want to get the order right. Um, it's actually times 1 over r2 minus 1 over r1, but I've dropped a negative sign somewhere, right? So negative 1 over f because this one over there to make a negative 1. It's negative 1 over f, which means you want to do positive 1 over f. You can reverse these two. So sorry, hopefully you're keeping up with all that. And in the end, though, the point is you get this. And that's the lens maker's equation. That's what we derive from geometrical optics, that if you have a thin lens with these two radii and this index, that's what its focal length is. And it also tells us we can use this to realize that this matrix we multiplied through uh, here is the thin lens matrix. It looks like this. You could also write it like this, 1, 0, 1, uh, minus 1 over f. So if you don't want to think about the radius of curvature, all these other properties of the thin lens, you just put its focal length there, minus 1 over f. And then this is the thin lens matrix also. Okay. So you can do a little bit more than just multiply matrices and get a result. You can think about the optical train and calculate properties by manipulating the matrices and the vectors and getting an answer. Just keep up with your negative signs.